creating custom actions with Alteris's Wise Package Studio. What is a custom action? Well, an action is any of the many things that take place during the course of a Windows installer installation. Standard actions are those that are included in a Windows installer installation by default, things such as create folders, which creates empty folders for components, create shortcuts, create shortcuts, um, write registry values, sets up registry information, etc. There are quite a number of standard actions that come in a standard Windows installer installation. And beyond that, if there's something not included that you'd like to do with your package, Microsoft allows you to create what we call a custom action, which allows you to run executables, DLL functions, scripts, etc. And that is, of course, what we'll be talking about here. Just what can a custom action do? It can run an executable, which is what we'll be discussing primarily. It can also run scripts. VB script and JavaScript are supported natively. You can run DLL functions. Um, those DLLs must be written in C or C++. And finally, there's a custom action type for displaying an error message, returning failure, and terminating the installation. But what we'll be demoing here in this presentation is running an executable and um, with the command line installation provided by a vendor. The source for your custom action can be in any number of different places. The first we'll talk about here is from a, the binary table. The binary table is a table in the database where temporary files can be stored for the course of the installation. So the executable is, is actually generated from a temporary binary stream. When the custom action is invoked, the stream data is copied to the temporary file, which is processed depending on the type of custom action. Usually this is your best choice, um, and it's useful if you don't want the file that you're using for the custom action to remain on the target system after the fact. The next option is to use files copied during installation. The location of the custom action code is determined by the resolution of the target path for this file. Therefore, this custom action must be called after the file has been installed. From a property reference, the target column of the custom action table contains a command line string for the executable identified in the source column. Same goes for custom actions using the directory table as a reference. However, quotation marks must be used around long file names and the value is treated as formatted text so it may contain references to properties, files, or directories. And finally from script code, the target field of the custom action table contains the script code itself for the custom action as a string um, of the, the literal script text. Um, if you're doing a VB script or a JavaScript, then this would be where your script lived in the package. But in the case of um, what we'll be demoing here, an executable, um, the best choice is to use the binary table. When to run your custom action is another important thing to consider. As in the case of standard actions, custom actions that are scheduled to run in the schedule, uh, the install UI sequence or the admin UI sequence only run if the user interface is set to run at the full level. So a silent installation or one assigned through group policy um, will not run any actions placed in those sequences. Um, some standard actions to to consider when you're placing your custom action is uh, cost finalize. If you are running an installed file, the custom action must be sequenced after cost finalize so that the file may be resolved. Install validate. 
If the custom action changes the installation state of features or components, it must be sequenced before the install validate action. Install files. If the source file is not already installed on the computer, um, deferred in script, custom actions must be sequenced after the install files. Install finalize. You want your custom action to take place before this, which is the final action in the uh, sequence. Conditionals are also important to consider. A condition can be used to determine when or under what circumstances a custom action should execute. Depending on how your installation is authored, the remove property may not equal all until after the install validate function. This means that any custom action that depends on remove equals all must be sequenced after the install validate action. A custom action may check remove to determine whether a product has been set to be completely uninstalled. So you would typically say if remove equals all, you're doing an installation. If remove is not equal to all, there's an uninstall taking place. And then you can sequence and um, conditionalize your custom actions based on that. And I'll now demonstrate implementing a custom action using Wolf's Patch Studio. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to use the admin script editor to create a simple script that just displays a message box. Um, I use this little wizard here to create the message box script. And um, using Kickstart will just display where the script's running from and what arguments were passed to it. With the admin script editor, we can make this into an executable that we can use for um, to simulate an installation uh, provided by a vendor. This script could just as easily shell out um, any command line we wish. From within the Windows Installer Editor, we'll create a new MSI package using the Windows application template. Now for our custom actions, we'll go into MSI script view, the execute deferred tab, and then scroll down to the bottom to insert our custom action before the install finalize. We'll double click execute program from installation here on the left to launch the uh, custom action wizard. The name should be unique and descriptive, no spaces, must start with a letter or an underscore. And then we'll browse to our executable. And here we can specify any command line arguments we wish to pass to that executable. For the properties, I won't go into detail because we've discussed it earlier. But for in-script operations, we'll choose um, deferred execution in the system context. We want it to run synchronously and ignore the exit code and um, scheduling options disabled. We want it to always execute. The progress bar text you can fill in, but uh, to my experience, this isn't actually presented in the dialog. And now that we have our custom action, we need to wrap around it a conditional statement. So we want it to only run if remove is not equal to all, because this is our install action. And you have your if then our custom action and to close that out an end statement there and now that'll handle our installation we need to do the same for uninstall so the condition would be if remove equals all then we're uninstalling I'll just get our end statement in there now. And again, the custom action just as before. Descriptive name. Browse to the file. At the time you browse to the file, Wise Package Studio actually gets that file and puts it in the binary table for you. There's no additional steps necessary. And then our command line arguments this time uninstall. For properties as before. And then You'll see the scheduling options is disabled. That's because it has to run that way when it's synchronous with ignoring the exit code. 
after we click OK, we have our two conditions for install and removal. Now because a package has to have at least one component inside of it and our custom actions don't meet that criteria, we're going to add a key to the package to meet that. Under software, packages, I'll put the package name and then for a value I'll put the um, date property. Properties are identified in brackets and now our package has something in it. You could choose anything. Um, this is helpful because you could inventory it or use it as the basis to check if your package has been installed. And then we'll, um, I like to create a new directory for all my packages. So I'll create a directory for our custom action demo. And then in here, we'll place the MSI itself. At this point, Package Studio builds the MSI based on what we've told it to do, and we can go ahead and test it out. Now just to quickly illustrate that what we did actually does work, we'll run a um, minimal GUI installation here with QB which just performs the installation showing only the progress bar. The installation is relatively quick because we're only installing a single registry entry. But our custom action should kick off here in a second. And we see the install argument is passed as we specified for installation. So just to illustrate the functionality of the uninstall, we use the slash x, which uninstalls. Again, the custom action will kick off again, and this time we'll see the uninstall parameter specified. Um, naturally, this command line installation is just showing us that it's doing what we're telling it to do, but it could be a silent installation or um, the installation of a prerequisite for the package that you're working on. So there we have it. Just to quickly summarize, use conditions to control the execution. Have it only install when you're installing. If you're uninstalling, you have to consider this on your own and take it into account through its own custom action. Because Windows installer functionality is going to be present in your command line setup just because you've wrapped it in an MSI. Other than meeting GPO deployment requirements, this doesn't offer any of the benefits of Windows Installer. You're not going to get advertising or selling or rollback or all the different command line options available. Um, it's just going to wrap up your executable and do exactly what you told it to do. So uninstall, need to account for, install, same thing. Basically, anything you want the package to do um, when you're working with custom actions, you're going to have to specify explicitly. As always, if you have any questions, please uh, discuss them in the forums, particularly the package development forum. There's um, plenty of people there, including myself, that have a lot of experience with this and can help you with any problems you run up against or questions that I haven't answered here. Thank you.